Welcome back to another video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. My name is Ron and today we're going to tackle replacing a uh, bad velvet drive transmission in an older ski boat uh, with a new ZF 1 to 1 gear. Step 1 is to remove the motor box and remove the rear center floors. I like to put some uh, towels down or something to protect the floors, keep the uh, grease and grime off of the carpet. Removing the exhaust can be one of the more challenging or difficult aspects of this job. Uh, I've found it much easier, faster, and cheaper for the customer to simply take the, uh, the, the three inch exhaust hose coming right off the manifold and just cut it with your sawzall and replace it with new hose later. This is an inexpensive uh, hose removal tool. Uh, you can get this at Harbor Freight Tools if you'd like, but uh, the, the shape and the bend of the hook makes it really easy to try to remove hoses uh, anywhere in the boat. With the exhaust out of the way, the next step is to remove the shaft coupling from the transmission coupling. Remove the four bolts and uh, push the shaft back. One thing that was noticed was the shaft was riding very low on the shaft log or inside the shaft log. It was actually rubbing the bottom of it and off to one side. This motor has been running out of alignment for a long time. Transmission coupling bolts removed. The uh, drive shaft is slid back. Uh, the next step is going to be to go ahead and uh, remove the oil from the gearbox. That will need to be sucked out of the transmission through the dipstick hole. Now remove the wires from the transmission neutral safety switch. Remove the bolts from the transmission mounts to the engine bed. Now at the front motor mounts, loosen the trunnion bolts. Uh, you may have one or two depending on make and model of the engine. Loosen them up, then tap them back. Uh, we want to loosen these because we are going to pivot the motor up and we want this to rotate freely inside the mount. Okay, I think we're ready to lift the back of the engine up. Uh, remember the front trunnion bolts have been loosened up so the engine will pivot. Uh, the rear trans mount bolts have been removed, drive shafts removed, and all the other key things here have been removed. And now we're just gonna pivot the back of the motor up. You're going to want to look at the front, keep an eye on that, make sure we're not pinching, pinching anything. Our front water pump looks to be the first thing that's going to hit the floor, so we're going to keep him about a half inch away. Yep, yeah, about a half inch away from hitting the floor, so that's as high as we're going to go with the motor. Now we can work on unbolting the transmission. Next is to remove the transmission mounts uh, from the transmission itself. You'll need to do this uh, in order to access the uh, mounting bolt anyway. Four of the bolts are exposed, but the lower two are studs with nuts. Um, they're kind of hidden until you get those transmission mounts off, but you'll need to remove those uh, nuts as well. Okay, the transmission mounts are removed. The bolts are removed except for one. Uh, one of the lower studs, the nut is coming, the stud's coming with the nut, I should say. Uh, and I have broke the gearbox loose. I'm going to put just a little bit of tension going up. And continue to remove the bolts. Uh, Got one bolt on the top, and I got that stud down there. This Borg Warner gearbox is close to 100 pounds, so just beware. When I was younger, I would just grab a hold of it and pull it out by hand. Now I'm older but wiser even cut me a board with a cushion out to sit on and make myself comfortable. 
All right, all we got is the one stud down there. And we're out about uh, three quarters of an inch. Put a little more tension on that. Now we're up to our nut down there. If the stud, or if the nut came off of the stud, we'd have been out by now. But it's got to be just a wee bit cantankerous. And of course it doesn't want to go by fingers. Nope, she's going to fight me all the way. Got some going now. Those bottom nuts, by the way, they're taking 11 sixteenths French. The rest of them are five eighths. You got Borg Warner's got four bolts, two studs with nuts. So I gotta walk this out all the way. Hey, the nut came off. It went in the build. We're gonna find that. All right, let's see if we can get this bad boy out of there. There it is. Well, with the transmission out of there, uh, what we see is the uh, dampener plate bolted to the flywheel behind the bell housing. Bell housing is going to be the next thing to come off. This is a bottom mount starter. Um, you'll need to remove that to get the bell housing off. You've got one bolt that's easy to see. There's another bolt underneath that's kind of hard to see. You've got a battery cable that needs to be uh, removed. And of course, remove the battery cable from the battery, please. With the starter out, look for the smaller bolts that hold the dust cover, that's a thin metal plate, to the bell housing. These bolts will need to be removed. The dust cover will stay uh, in place. We don't need to remove the dust cover, but you will need to find those two little bolts. There's one on each side of the oil pan and remove those. Next you can remove the bell housing bolts to the engine block on the left side. The right side uh, just a little bit more difficult on a uh, end tomorrow. I'll show you that next. On the right side, end tomorrow uses the uh, bolts here to support the terminal strip for your electrical connections. Um, you'll see that there is a hole in the back of the plastic there to get access to those bolts just be careful that plastic is probably very old and brittle and and may already be cracked so just be careful in that area okay starters removed all the bolts are out the dust cover bolts uh, out and now he's going to break it loose it came right off and there's the bell housing it gets set to the side And now what we have left is our damper plate right here. These bolts come off next. The dust cover stays in place, but the two bolts from the back side that were attaching it to the bell housing have been removed. The starter is already off. So removing and replacing the damper plate is next. One thing you need to pay attention on these damper plates uh, and the replacement damper plates is the clearance. Uh, now on a bottom mount starter this is not as important as it is on a top mount. On a top mount starter uh, this would not have worked. Uh, the damper plate is uh, hiding the teeth on the flywheel so on a top mount starter that damper plate would have been uh, ground back or cut back to expose the teeth. On a bottom mount like our boat that we're working on 
you just want to make sure that it's uh, uh, not extending beyond the top of the teeth. Well, all the old parts have been removed. The gear is out of the boat. Um, and I think we're going to take a break here and come back in part two to show the uh, installation of the new gear and some of the uh, uh, issues we had to deal with with that. So again, thanks for watching this video from SkiBoatPartsOnline.com. And if you like it, uh, click the subscribe button. Uh, uh, we'll keep these videos coming to help all of our fellow ski boaters uh, keep their boats on the water running smooth. Thank you and God bless.